cash was king, run for cover. I believe holding cash is one of the biggest risks of our time. The global currencies are predominantly too dependent on the US dollar which is backed by nothing but belief and confidence of investors since it was decoupled from the gold standard in 1971. Because I have zero confidence in fiat currencies these days, I have been busy transforming my hard-earned savings into cash-generating tangible assets. Over the past three years I have reduced my cash holdings from approximately $800,000 to a bare minimum of about $30,000 which I consider as an emergency fund to help me ride out two years of disruption in a low-cost economy. I have acquired new skills to survive a crisis in relative peace and away from the pain. I converted all but my emergency fund into tangible assets in the form of property and a growing stash of physical gold holdings. Central banks and commercial banks have historically devalued the dollar by almost 96.2% over the past 100 years. Before the establishment of the Federal Reserve Bank of the United States, the US dollar was stable and strictly tied to gold. Since 1913 the Federal Reserve increased the dollar supply by a staggering 1,900 times and consequently created inflation, devaluation of the purchasing power of the dollar. Today 68% of U.S. citizens have less than $1,000 in savings and 78% live paycheck to paycheck, accepting whatever interest rate is dictated by the Federal Reserve, the world's largest central bank. Business leverage and consumer leverage, debt, is at the highest it has ever been while growth of these enormous piles of debt has exploded since the last financial crisis. China and Japan have both over $1 trillion in U.S. Treasury bonds respectively counting on the fact that the Fed will pay back the interest but not necessarily the principal, ever. Meanwhile 20% of children in the U.S. live below the poverty line, and a larger part just barely over the poverty line, defined as less than 50% of the median household income. Real wages have been stagnant for decades while inflation caused by multiple rounds of quantitative easing has reduced living standards for many households in the West. Over the past years cryptocurrencies have made first inroads towards replacing the dollar as the world's reserve currency but failed. Having said that I don't believe this will be the case next time round but personally for me, I am not willing to invest just yet in this new technology as a dominant and at the same time viable one has not been identified yet. The International Monetary Fund has been pushing for its very own STR, Special Drawing Right currency comprised of a basket of US dollars, euros, pound sterling, and Japanese yen while the Chinese RMB is gaining in global importance with each day and international investment. The dollar as the reserve currency is being attacked from all directions and some day it will fall eventually. Today the US government is in almost $22 trillion debt, growing at a faster pace than ever. Whenever countries over leveraged themselves they destroyed the currency in the past. This is how the mighty Roman Empire fell but more recent examples are Venezuela, Turkey, or Argentina. Whilst maybe not completely destroyed, we have seen significant value erosion through a devaluation caused by hyperinflation in Germany, England, China, France, Hungary, Zimbabwe, and many more. The current budgeted interest only on the U.S. government debt is about $365 billion a year or some 8% of the federal budget annually with projections to reach 12.5%, almost $800 billion, of the federal budget by the mid-2020s. Obviously this is not sustainable long term and the current sitting U.S. president just cut taxes and increased federal spending to a new high at over $1 trillion USD in growth effectively doing the opposite to relieve the aching fiscal situation and in my view only pushing out the inevitable steep plunge of the U.S. economy into one of the worst recessions in modern history. Whether this is good or bad is irrelevant as long as we remember that it will hurt the recovery more the longer the U.S. waits and that we can all prepare for this. Lastly we have to understand that when the U.S. and China will go into recession, all signs point to that they already are at the brink of it the global economy will follow into the recession. There are humongous systemic risks with the so-called globally systemic banks, also known as banks too big to fail, that have not been addressed fully post the 2008 global financial crises. 
anybody claiming otherwise clearly never understood the fragile and well over leveraged system. Deutsche Bank, one of the biggest banks globally, for instance, lost 94% of its market capitalization since the 2008 crisis and while eroding a lot of its toxic asset holdings has not succeeded to eliminate its toxic balance sheet yet. Currently the bank is valued at less than $19 billion and it holds almost $50 trillion in dangerous derivatives. No country in the world could bail out Deutsche Bank which last year alone reduced its operations globally sacking some 10,000 employees or close to 10% of its workforce. What is the plan? Current thinking evolves around merging Deutsche Bank with another very large German bank, Commerce Bank, which equally holds large amounts of toxic products and derivatives from before the 2008 crisis. This sounds like a very bad plan to me but maybe it will buy us some additional time to prepare. Did you know about the bail-in strategy, a replacement of the bailouts that a year during the global financial crisis? Legislation all around the world has been passed and banks are now legally enabled to confiscate your deposits above a certain value threshold, around $100,000 usually, in case they need to liquidate their over-leveraged operations. Read up on it and then run for cover. Whether you are in Europe, the US, in Singapore, China, Australia, or elsewhere your hard-earned savings are at risk if you have them sitting in financial institutions. This includes all assets made of paper and distributed by the financial industry. Only tangible assets will hold their value during the next global financial crises. We can only hope it is not going to be a complete collapse of the financial system. Judging by the demonstrated greed and dishonesty of the financial sector I rather prepare for the worst and hope for the best. So I ask you, how much confidence do you have in the systemically important banks and the US dollar today? In what ways are you protecting your assets? How long do you think the dollar will stay the world's reserve currency? For freedom and to live your dreams. Your financial gladiator.